If, they, if we ever had a, a family movie, it's probably that one about how 9-11 was an inside job. And I looked over at him, and he looked over at me with his whiskey, and he goes, when boys were bloody men. Give him a call. And he's like, yeah, I'm in Ohio. And he said it so casually. He said it like, yeah, I'm going to be a little late. I'm just going to need to go to Canada real quick. Fuck you, Dad! All right, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Fuck You, Dad. A uh, very special episode this week. Uh, our guest, you might know him from TV, Bob's Burgers, or movies like The Big Sick. It's Kurt Brownholer, everybody. Kurt, Hello. How, how you doing, man? I'm good. How you doing? I'm doing pretty good. I, uh, I noticed that um, during the pandemic, you switched... Uh, hot tub to the 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 the, the, the zoom show the and was, digital realm the digital <laughs> realm exactly and i was gonna ask you about uh like how did you how was your comedy experience during the whole pandemic look all i can say is we've been doing for we've been doing hot tub for 16 years 16 and a half wow. years at this point and uh we didn't stop that's the most i can say <laughs> We didn't stop. We did it every Monday, and it didn't stop. Uh, like so, McDonald's, McDonald's yeah. didn't stop either because it's, it it's stop. necessary. Exactly. Did it's we improve? Did America. we improve it? No, we did not improve <laughs> it. Uh, but it did it not stop? Yes, it yeah. did not stop. That's pretty much all you can say about Zoom shows. Yeah. I think the best thing you can say about Zoom shows is, "Well, it happened." Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that well, we did it. That, yeah. <laughs> Was that? Did that, did that make us better? I don't know. <laughs> did anyone enjoy it? I, I have no idea. <laughs> the comedian that like we have people who watch and they watch religiously and they're they always say that they appreciate it because they live in places where they don't get to see a live comedy show. Um, and, and so, so that was always very nice. Yes, but, but as, as from the experience of a performing pers- experience, yeah, yeah, it's very it rough. is uh, not satisfying, but it is nice to see friends, you know? Yeah, yeah um, exa- that's how I feel right. about sometimes live, especially open mics right now, because it's like, it's it's still rough to go to an open mic, but it's one of the only times that I'm genuinely excited to see some <laughs> some other comedians, you know? Yeah. Because of the wear and tear, you get like, oh, here he comes, John, with his one foot joke that's funny. And then, uh, but now it's like, oh, I haven't seen him in a year right, and a half. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's fucking John. Yeah, yeah, He's yeah. got a beard now. Yeah, yeah. yeah do that yeah. joke. Do that yeah, joke, yeah, John. Yeah, do the foot joke. <laughs> yeah, 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 COVID was so bad, we miss open micers. That's yeah, true. Yeah. yeah. That's a test. Yeah. No, I just started going back out on the road, and my first weekend was in Portland in May. And it was like everyone in the audience, it was their first time out seeing the show and it was my first time out and it was it was awesome it was like it was like we all rediscovered stand-up comedy together it was like amazing yeah it was really cool all the shows that i've done um since it's like been fully back have all been everyone's excited to be out and happy it's it's great and it only means it's gonna stop and feel really bad yeah yeah, yeah, it's it's coming yeah 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 well, you never know. You know, we could just go right back in inside for the Delta <laughs> variant, you know, and then we'll come out. We'll be so excited, and then the yeah, Gamma yeah. variant will come. Yeah, it's like seasons, you know. Yeah, exactly. It's new seasons. Yeah, yeah, it's the new seasons. <laughs> it's the new seasons. <laughs> I mean, the Delta's coming in a lot earlier this year. <laughs> it's it's going to be – I keep seeing those news reports and just not thinking about it. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. got to just push it back because, yeah. you know, we're like, that's... you know, yeah, at this, uh, at this point, literally zombies could be coming. And I'm like, well, I don't know. <laughs> I got to show you next gotta, week. I'm yeah. sure we'll hold them back. At yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but I've always wondered what it would feel like to live in Alaska, you know? And now I feel like I understand what it would be like. Like, summertime in Alaska, people must fuck all the time. <laughs> they lose they their mind. going crazy. <laughs> yeah. The sun's up all the time. They've been fucking stuck inside for eight months. It just must be. So now I kind of have a feeling for, for what it's like. And... It does rid me of my desire to ever live in Alaska. Oh, right. there you go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the highs are high. Yeah. The lows are low. One of the, some really of those lows are being uh, eaten alive by a bear. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. what would you, did you do any like wacky shows other than Zoom? Like, did you do any like, oh, I, would, I did a, a rooftop at a drive in movie theater kind of thing? Yeah, I did, a, I did a rooftop at the Brea Improv, which had like this huge inflatable screen so that like people, there was like 400 cars there. It was insane. Oh, wow. And so then you would hear like honking 
like go go back do you know what i mean like you would hear like waves of honking as yeah, people is... like got the joke or whatever that was weird that's um weird. yeah that's less laughter more like i'm causing a traffic accident yeah yeah it was it was very strange yeah it's like it's strange it was like because the brea improv is in a huge mall and so it was just the top of a parking structure at a gigantic southern california mall you know wow, so it was bro. like you the fact that you could fit like 400 cars just on the <laughs> tops is was, was insane yeah but then like the fact that the screen was like 45 feet tall or whatever it just felt so, so weird. weird it, it felt, felt so weird, weird and so awkward, awkward. Trying, trying out new jokes was weird um i did also do i did a show at whitney cummings house randomly it was I like think a, I, I think I, I saw that yeah, yeah, i saw yeah. some yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah it was very strange it was like in the middle of the pandemic it was just like everybody just wore masks and got tested and then we were outside the whole time but it was for it was for charity um and so like it was released and stuff and made money for charity so oh okay. i felt less bad about doing it yeah um, but it was yeah. like fascinating to do you know right yeah especially in the middle because everyone's sort of freaked out so the yeah. the people that you get at a comedy show are usually yeah. were usually pretty interesting yeah don't, don't care whatsoever yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> right well this was but this was also like a select these were this was a yeah, celebrity yeah house, right. so it was like celebrity friends so it was like celebrity people who don't give a fuck <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's like famous even, <laughs> yeah even weirder you know <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah these are people that don't give a fuck with a platform you yeah. know? <laughs> <laughs> spreading it <laughs> So, uh, Kurt, where did you grow up? I know this is that's a really smooth transition, but oh yeah, no, like you know what? It's a natural transition, don't you know? I, <laughs> I, I, I have a podcast, and I often do that as well. Like I transition, and then I call out my own segue. Yeah, and I think if you don't, call, my new my new thought is if you don't call it out, no one will ever fuck no one, you. No one. It's know. only I, me that I, gave I, a fuck. I, I exactly. actually had the same opinion. Kurt, yes. And I was like wondering why the fuck Nick even said that. I was like, it, wasn't, it honestly wasn't weird until you made it weird. It wasn't but, weird. It was just like, yeah, where'd you grow up? It's yeah, a yeah, natural it a, human that, question. A con conversation ended, then you brought up a new point as conversations were. But, you know, as, <laughs> you always dream of your podcast being this perfect, like, river stream of conversation that never stops, you know? And then uh, the fact that I just put a huge rock in the middle. Just, well, where are you from? Yeah. So I felt hey, like, it, you know, it, if we didn't, didn't have, have a rock in the middle of the stream, stream would we, we have, have whitewater, whitewater rafting? rafting? No, now we're we talking. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So I would prefer Lies. to listen to a podcast that's a whitewater rafting experience <laughs> than a lazy river. Right? You're right. You're right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I grew up in Jersey. I grew up in Jersey. I was born in Michigan. My parents got divorced when I was two. And so I grew up in Jersey with my mom and my dad lived in Michigan. Okay. So you were you like a summer I go with dad kind of kid? It was like, I think maybe there was like a couple, there was a couple summers like when I got to be like 12 or something where I would go like there for a month, um, which was always confusing to me. Like I didn't know why <laughs> yeah. I was that going feel, there for a month. That feels like, okay, you're old enough to kind of handle it. Like, well, it seemed like a test drive almost like a month. Yeah. Yeah. No. And also it was just like, and then I would always think about it where it's just like, I'm here for a month, but it's not like my dad isn't working so it's yeah. like the majority of t it was like really just me flying out to fucking michigan to spend time with his wife and my brother <laughs> my okay. brother my half brother my half sister um and that was nice but it was also like you know it was just like oh okay so you're just gonna work and then i'll just be here feeling like homesick <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you're, you're just yeah. flying to be in a, a stranger's house for a month Kind yeah, exactly. Of. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, not like like it's not vacation, familiar enough really. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah, it's like hanging out with your neighbor's kid, but for a month. Kind of. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah, but it was. Uh, I'm very close with my because of those months. I think I am. I'm very close with my half brother, my brother, um, and uh, yeah. So I think that maybe that was a that was yeah, a, that's a, a plus of it. Yeah. Notice you didn't say dad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No. like me, me and my half brother really bonded me and my dad let's not you know yeah i mean like my dad is like a fa he's famously just a strange guy don't he ha he has eight children That's from okay. many different women um, oh and so he he ha he is a he is a father over and over again <laughs> But if you asked him, honestly, if you asked him, like, like, who are you? I don't think he would ever say fa a father. Do you know what I mean? 
Like, I really, truly don't think that that was ever, like, on his list of things to be or do. Yeah. And it just so happened that he did it repeatedly for 60 fucking years, you know? Wow. Yeah, 60 years because of eight kids. That's, yeah. that's, that's your whole rap. life. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, a, yeah. a legacy of having kids. And he's like, no, that wasn't on the to-do list at yeah. all. Yeah, like my, I think my eldest sister, I, I could be wrong on this, but I think my eldest sister is around 60 and my youngest two sisters are 18 because they got twins right at the end. <laughs> oh, that's such a wild gap. A wild gap. You visit yeah, your old, gap. older sibling in a retirement home and you're going to a high school graduation <laughs> for the other. Yeah. It's, across a century, you know? Yeah, it is really insane. And so I was like thinking about it that like, like he's has been a dad every day for sixty years, <laughs> which is what? amazing. Yeah. Wild. Yeah, like yeah, he's yeah. been a, and when I say he's been a dad every day, meaning he's had children in his home. Do you know what I mean? Like they yeah. like the my youngest sisters just moved down. They just like they they're back. That's... They moved back for the summer because they're in college. So he has kids back in the house now, you know? Um and that's that. That's what breaks my mind about it is that maybe that's why he works so never much. Really, been interested. Yeah, exactly. He had yeah. to work that. Yeah, much. to get out of there. Just to get out. <laughs> yeah. escape. Well, always children at home. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. What did he do as a job? If, if that's not a. Uh, I mean, he okay was a say. surgeon. So my mom. Oh, my wow. mom was a nurse. A surgeon so gets I, around, man. Yeah, surgeon. <laughs> you well, don't really, I don't think of a surgeon as like, yeah, I'm gonna have eight kids. Oh, you know? oh no. Surgeons are like the bad boys. Surgeons are like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They're the bad boys of doctors. And if doctors are already like the bad boys, you know, but the surgeons are like the airplane pilots of doctors. <laughs> um, he treated fatherhood like a surgery. He was just like, I'll get in, I'll get out. Yep. And I'm clean. Like, and I'm, I'm done. Like, I'm there's done. no long term care here. <laughs> no. I just take care of this specific problem and then I send you on your way. Uh, it's exactly 100%. And I do think it's because it's like, I think a surgeon is like, um, it takes an additional, um, it's very much like, it's very much the energy that is required to like be a stand up, I think, you know, where it's like, you're, you're, you, you just are, you just do it by yourself. You know, it's like just based on your skills and your hands, uh, and and it it requires like a cockiness that you like think that you're like oh, that you should that you should do that. <laughs> I should. Be I don't have that. I should, I, I, listen, I'll do thirty minutes for us of people. I will not. Op- I will not touch a man's heart. <laughs> you don't put a, a man's life in my hands. You know. Well, yeah. that's the but crazy a re- thing. Yeah. About I, I, um, that's the crazy thing about stand up is you talk to some surgeons and they'll they'll open you know someone's head. And then they go up to you and they go, oh, God, you're so brave for getting up there. And you're like, what? <laughs> I am bra- that happened yeah, to me yeah, with yeah. a veteran. There's a guy yeah. with like a, the, one of those veteran hats, like you'd been in a war. And yeah. he came up to me after a show and he was like, man, to get up there and talk about your penis, that, that takes some real <laughs> bravery. And I was like, you, you've seen combat. I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. It is so weird that public speaking is people's like number one fear. Above yeah. sharks and snakes and everything, it's just like talking in front of other human beings. <laughs> yeah, is so strange. Your, your fellow man who you see yeah. every day, who yeah. you see every day. I think it's people don't understand. Uh, like the, all they have to do is like go through it where it goes terribly once, and they go, "Oh, I'm not dead. Like yeah. nothing bad happened." Right. And then you're fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and then you're fine. And we, you know, you bomb all the time, and you go, "Oh, you know, yeah. I feel bad, but I, you know, I'm okay." Yeah. yeah. Uh- Unlike your dad's job, I mean, he fucks up. He does kill yeah. Like, yeah, there, there, there is, there yeah, is exactly. a literal, it's a pretty big deal. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. true. But so, yeah, so my dad was like, you know, this surgeon guy. And then my mom was just, a, was a nurse. She was a pediatric nurse. Okay. So it was like, I had this very weird childhood of like growing up on the Jersey Shore with my mom where we didn't have a lot of money. And then I would go visit my dad who had a ton of money. And so it was like this weird oh. kind of like. And I think that there was like, I think there was like that bred resentment in me as well, you know, because mm. I would go and I'd be like, why isn't anybody clipping coupons, huh? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Dude, yeah. you guys are rich. <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. Because <laughs> my mom would clip coupons and we would just go with like a hundred coupons and then just like I would hunt for all the stuff. But now, like, I don't clip coupons now. Does anybody, I mean, do coupons exist? I guess they do. <laughs> just, I think yeah, they do. We've just, ex- exist. we've just accepted that we're screwed more often. We're like, yeah, that's yeah. how much it costs. All right, man, whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I got to stay inside for a year because of COVID. Yeah, sure. Like, it just, <laughs> the life sucks more. So I'm just like, yeah, 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 yeah okay. Yeah. It's going to cost $10. <laughs> um, did I, oh, fuck, I 
had a question. Um, oh, basically, so did you, were you like a troublesome kid? Because I always relate Jersey Shore with like the muscle dudes yeah. and the like steroids and stuff, but you don't seem like you were that kind of kid. You were clipping coupons with your mom. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. What you have to remember too is like the, all those people from Jersey Shore are not from Jersey Shore. They were summering. So they are coming from New York oh, and Long Island. I didn't know. Oh, that all those makes people sense. are from Long Island and New York and Staten Island, mostly Staten Island, which is the butthole of all, yeah. all of <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And so it's like literally the worst people from that area coming down to New Jersey to shit on it. Oh, um, see, I, that's terrible because I always related yes. like that's that's it. That's the whole place. No, I, I think of exactly. the Sopranos when I think of New Jersey. Oh, <laughs> there you go. And so that's northern Jersey. And then yeah. I grew up in central Jersey on the o near the ocean, not on the ocean. But uh, so, yeah, so there and there's really different like and then in southern Jersey, it's very straight. Like there's the biggest national park on the east coast is in southern new jersey it's called wow. the pine barrens wow. nobody knows about it no nope. it's amazing yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like this huge place so yeah jersey is multifaceted the garden state huh. yeah it's so weird that it's just known as like the hacky like eh, it's dirty and shitty <laughs> over there but like yeah. you said there's all these different types of facets in it you know yeah and it's like it is like the it is crowded it is like I think the the most densely populated state in the union, at least when I was growing up. You're just was. ripping New Jersey facts right now. <laughs> yeah, I, you're just blowing my Jersey mind. A tour guy, Jersey uh... pride, Jersey pride, baby. <laughs> but I can't even imagine you saying Jersey pride. I know, baby. right? Like, Jersey pride is like Jersey pride, baby. It's like smashing someone's skull in because he <laughs> insulted Italy, a country he's never been to. But like, <laughs> you've been, yeah, Jersey pride, baby. Like, I, I can't. I, that, that, doesn't, that doesn't feel right to me. You know. <laughs> Well, this is a reality. That's yeah. the fiction. All right? Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. You need to set this straight. There needs to be like a Sopranos style show, but it's just about like a normal ginger man who lives in New Jersey. <laughs> in New Jersey yeah. He's just guys like an office job, you know, who loves his children. Just and I love New Jersey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like, that's good. I go, I go to the park here, and uh, what's the? Wasn't there a park called Action Park or something where a bunch yes. of people died? Oh yeah, I went to Action Park a lot as a child. Oh wow. Um, it was. It was totally insane. It was crazy. It was <laughs> like when I watched the, the movie, I almost feel like the movie doesn't express how insane it was to actually go there. Like the like it had a loop de loop water slide that wasn't oh, made yeah. by engineers. It was just made by the guy. <laughs> the guy, who, the like, guy high it. on cocaine. Yeah, yeah, high on cocaine. cocaine. People, people, people died, died there, there all the time. The time. Yeah, I, I heard there's no podcast about it. It just sounds yeah. like it was like a daily occurrence almost. Oh, it, I mean, I remember going, there was one slide that would go, it was a tube and it would go underground and then it, you would shoot out of a hillside <laughs> uh, into a like late uh, freezing water that had just like come down, melt water. So it was like oh, maybe yeah, 38 like... degrees. It was so cold. And you would shoot out in the air like 25 feet above this water. And the way it was designed, it just made like a hard turn underground. So you're in pitch darkness and every time, now as a kid, so I'm not, I don't weigh that much, but my, your head slams against the bottom. <laughs> and so you're like, you're like shocked a little bit. Like you're like fuzzy. <laughs> and then you shoot out in the air and then you hit like this 38 degree water and it's like it's you feel like you've died it is fucking <laughs> crazy it's not it sounds like guantanamo bay i was gonna say park. you know what i mean it comes out you're like oh, i'll tell you where it is i'll tell you where it is <laughs> like what? and it was just like yeah. gotta keep going like you would always be like so excited to do that slide and then afterwards you'd be like hurt and you're like, like, I don't want to do that yeah. slide again. We got to oh. go home. I got to sit down in the grass. I got to call my mom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Or heads bleeding. Like, today was a great day. <laughs> <laughs> so um, would you say, Kurt, because you're kind of a, a new dad. Yeah. So have you, did you learn anything from your dad to like bring it over to you being a dad? Uh, yeah, I'm just trying not to get divorced. I think that's the name. <laughs> the of every modern father. You're like, the kids are easy. Let, let me tell you. <laughs> no, I mean, like, I, we're doing, like, I just, in my, I think my brother would agree with this, too. Like, because we were raised the way we were with dad's example, I think we all, we our, like, goal in life is to not get divorced. <laughs> uh for the, like for for kids sake um but also i love my wife i don't want to get her divorced but uh even before i was married that's the one thing i knew i was gonna do was yeah. like not get divorced um 
but who knows? You know, and, and that's not to blame anyone who gets divorced in any way, shape, or form. No, right. you know, no. but it's no. it's always like it is the, un, it is unenjoyable. As yeah, exactly. from a broken home, you're like not the greatest, yeah. not the best. Would not love a redo. <laughs> and it's always the like my dad's. It's always his like biggest. Uh, I, fuck up is a is a word but that's yeah. always the thing that like you make your whole life about not doing and i yeah. feel like that's why i don't confront people a lot because my dad was a screamer he would just yell about anything that would happen so me yeah. going through my life i was like i'm never ever going to yell at anybody even if they do terrible things to me like i'll never confront anybody so yeah. i i'm always interested in what people learn through like dads and stuff and how that makes your whole life uh interest you know you know, right. that forms your whole path it's not very but funny, it is it but is very interesting that it's usually not what they are trying to teach you but what you learned from the way they act yeah you know yeah, that's a, that is a really great point actually yeah and yeah, yeah. uh i think another thing that i do I try, I'm like a very active dad. And I think I, I, that I am that way because of the fact that like my dad is not an active dad, you know? Um, I think in his older age, he's starting to get a little bit better. Uh, maybe I think, uh, mm -hmm. but yeah, just like, you know, as I said, it was just like, it was a dad for so long, but you kind of would be like, Oh, what, what? <laughs> yeah. it's like, well, I, I love to operate on people, you know, like, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. That's his thing. yeah. It's and also if if I heard my surgeon had eight kids from like a bunch of different <laughs> right. people and right. was like not a, I want my surgeon to be a good dad with like a golden retriever and like you know a yeah. family that loves him but yeah. if he's like I'm out here smashing and it's, it's crazy out here <laughs> yeah, man yeah. anyway let's get you under yeah if I hear you have eight kids I'm like we've already made six mistakes yeah. I don't want to be the other one <laughs> <laughs> and also but also you know that that um. His uh, uh, generation was also like, I think, the first to be like, fuck it, divorces, do them. Oh, Let's yeah. Get yeah, yeah, into yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We're shedding it. Do whatever. Have one. Yeah. Get, buy one, get one free on divorce. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think their parents were like, no one gets divorced. Exactly. And then they, and then they saw. Like their parents, maybe they were like, they should have gotten divorced. They were miserable and uh -huh. they made us miserable. So I'm just going to get a fucking divorce, whatever I want. Yeah, you know? yeah. She's like, did so you go to the just... store today? You're like, I got a lawyer and you're just fucking <laughs> get out of there. You know? Yeah, so it's just that fucking pendulum that swings back and right. forth, you know? But I mean, my parents uh, are still together Loser. and I'm a little bit of that. I'm a little bit of like, maybe they should have got a divorce because like, yeah. I don't know, maybe, but they're still together age? now. Here's a question though: At what age would you have been cool with them getting a divorce? That's the tricky part. Is when I it was when I, when I was like my parents went up elementary school, and I thought yeah. they, they were so tired. Like the the whole situation was so bad. I was like, yeah, of course. I was just like, like I don't even think you guys is like parents. It's like these are just two roommates. We need, to, we, need to, we need to leave each other alone. These are two adults who need to go about their lives. And they're like, I don't want to be with your mom anymore. It's like, yeah, we don't want to be with you, dude. Yeah. Gonna, we're trying to break up with, talk about like, it's this, because it does reach a point where it's so blaringly obvious where it's yeah, like, yeah, 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 this is just, it's uh, crazy that this even is a kid, obscene. even yeah, a kid yeah. is like, I'm trying to color in here. Yeah, okay? yeah, yeah. It's and like, yeah, it's like family. Crazy. This is crazy. Yeah. So did you, you've been so living on the couch. So after the divorce, did you feel like your life improved? Well, I mean, it's a whole deeper thing, but it's, so it's, but it's, so my dad was kind of crazy. So it wasn't uh -huh. like a traditional, like they were separated right. for eight years, but everyone was so broke. They didn't get divorced to like legally nine years later. Cause it's like all they had to split was like an EBT card. You right, know what right, I mean? Right. Like it was like, what's, but um, if the answer is yes. Yes. Soon, you did feel, you felt like it was like, I felt like life was, was a lot better. Yeah. 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 Because oh, it's just, it was a lot of, a sh if you're in a situation where there's just a shit ton of drama in your house and then yeah. there's less, even if whatever you go to your other parents' house every now and then that's always better. Right. 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 That's always Agreed. better. Agreed. Cause it's like a, you know, it, what's a fake? It's cause it's like, it's just a fake thing at that point, you know, yeah. and, and yeah, little yeah. kids can see through that. Exactly. Yeah. And it's, yeah, it's just like any time. And I notice it too with my, four-year-old like anything that is like that is outside of the norm of what she is used to causes her so much distress which is it's so weird and it also would be if the if we were fighting all of the time that would be a thing that's always like kind of like causing stress 
Yeah, um, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, look, yeah, yeah. Like kids are, they got a high emotional intelligence. They're not dumb if they're just yeah. There's mis- misery all around. And plus, my dad was just, he's a goober. He was real dumb. He would just be walking. He's just like, yeah, you know, I think, because he's just like an oversharer. So he'd just be like, yeah, I don't think uh, your mom's my soul, your, my soulmate. And be like, okay, I'm, <laughs> I'm 11. So I don't really know how to, I don't know how to really deal with this. Or he, he yeah, was playing yeah. He's like, wouldn't it be cool if I had my own apartment? I'd be like, yeah, it's cool if you live there forever. <laughs> Never talk to me again. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's just, I, but yeah, I think if, once once the the household's so toxic that like any, yeah. even if it's be- dramatic change, any change would be better. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah, I think it goes back and forth. I think it goes back and forth. I do think yeah. like, and that's why because like I'm, I'm like, like backtracking, backtracking now on my thing, thing of like, don't, don't I don't want to get divorced. divorced. You know what I mean? And yeah, I'm not yeah, saying yeah. I want to get divorced. It's so no, weird. No, 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 no. Yeah, talking just, about this, it's as a good, if, it's a good, it's a good aim if it's uh, not. 100 percent necessary right exactly yeah, yeah um or you know like not just to go not having four do you know what i mean like four yeah, yeah. seems four, to be like I, four seems like a choice i do feel like four seems like a choice do you like because I mean? it's like you don't have to marry everybody right away <laughs> <No>. <laughs> not everyone's a marriage you know it's just let's you can just play it out you know? <laughs> There's no playing it out. Yeah. I think at dad. that point, you at, at the fourth one, you're just like, I just want to have another party. Like, can yeah, we yeah. just get all my pals yeah. together? Well, like, at, the, at the fourth one, we have to agree that like it is you. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. It's just yeah. like from you democracy, a... <laughs> it is four people have decided that they can't live with you anymore. To the point where they no, he's still with the fourth. He's still with the fourth. He's still with the fourth. Okay, that was okay. the success. This one, that one has worked. So how, third, how long is the fourth one then? Oh, 20 years. Oh, okay. that's actually, that's a good run. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, pretty good run, right? Yeah, yeah. You're still like, going. Just right Still past going. your childhood, though. But that was <laughs> that was the open mic age, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but also, at that same time, like, he, you know, he got married when he was 20, 20, I think. Oh, yeah. You know? That's, like, can't that's, I can't that's... imagine. I my my brain would explode if you yeah. threw, threw a kid and threw a kid and a wife in oh. my head right now. Oh, oh. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I got married when I was thirty eight, thirty nine. Okay, that's like, what I'm gonna tell my can, mom. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Tell my mom yeah. I can handle that. Yeah. I, I know it won't happen for me at that age. Like it'll just accidentally happen earlier. But I, I'm aiming for that. <laughs> oh, <God>. That seems <laughs> better. <laughs> oh my god, that that sca- that gave me goosebumps when you said that. Kenyon getting married is oh my god. Ooh. You know, you, wait, you know that you're gonna get married before that? I just feel I just feel it. And like instinctual the same way like you could feel rain coming. I just feel <laughs> I feel like there's gonna be an incident where she's like, I'm keeping the kid and I'm like, All right, this is it. Here we go. This is what we're doing. <laughs> no, and- yeah. No, I mean, I, I guess I felt that way always about having kids. I was always just like, yeah, I want to be a dad. Um, I've always instinctually felt that, but I still waited till I was 41 to do it. <laughs> yeah, that's smart. That's, you want to be in a stable place. I know. Yeah. I feel like everyone I know from high school, it's like, he doesn't have it together. He's insane. He should be in prison. It's always on the Facebook post like this. had just had my third kid. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah exactly. Stephanie, and you're like, why? Why? Why, yeah. why do they, why did the most confidence to be just chucking <laughs> children down the, the earth? They, they always tried to scam you before. They're like, buy my Cutco knives. And then they're like, here's my third kid. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah, that's yeah, where it's like, uh, yeah, <laughs> good. <laughs> Yeah, Doug Stanhope has that amazing joke about, uh, like, uh, he, I think he's talking about Detroit auto workers, where it's like, they, he says something about one of them got laid off, and then he's interviewed on the news saying, like, yeah, well, what are me and my four kids going to do? And he's like, hold on a second. <laughs> you have four kids? Yeah. That's essentially like saying, well, what are my fo- me and my four Ferraris going to do? <laughs> Why did you continue to buy Ferraris? <laughs> When you were gonna get laid off. Oh. <laughs> That's such a funny good point. Four, four kids a... also is just uh, bringing it back to what we were talking about before. To have four kids is basically just a marriage challenge. Like you're done. Oh, yeah, it's not really, a family. Yeah, you're, you're just, just let me just challenge this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My my brother has four kids. He has four kids. He has four kids, and they seem like they're, they're just like it is so weird. Where it's just like it is a. I think it's a genetic thing where you're just like, I want to do this and yeah. I, I like it. Um, I got snipped right after the second one. I got a vasectomy. <laughs> I cannot have children anymore. Couldn't be happier Smart about move. that. Smart how, move. How, I how, how, it too. How, what was the time? Between... Two months after he was born. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, so you're like, never again, never again. You're just this. lying awake, like, oh my god. Set the appointment. I'm yeah, gonna yeah. call right now. The doctor probably yeah. asked, "Are you sure?" And he just shows him a video. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, crying yeah. for 16 hours. It's like, oh, I'm fucking yeah. sure. I well, okay, I got ready. one more question for you, Kurt, and then we'll wrap it up. But what is, because um, I want to know from a new dad, like what was the most rewarding experience you've had from being a dad and the um, the opposite of that, the most like, oh boy, here we go kind of moment? Uh, the most rewarding experience? I know that's, that's like kind of on the spot. Uh, no, no, not at all. Um, I mean, like the most rewarding is happens like it happens often do you know what i mean okay um you know just like like being with them when they uh, when they have a moment where they're not either trying to kill each other or themselves <laughs> and like they just like snuggle in and you have that like that peaceful moment with them like that is and that happens pretty often yeah um and anytime i like when my daughter told me her first joke um that was pretty great the joke cool. was um why is six afraid of seven and i said why and she said because seven eight nine are trying to eat them <laughs> uh it's just pretty great and then yeah so that's and then the the flip side of it is uh it's just the amount of like stress and 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 tiredness that I am all the time. And I feel like that will go away, you know, like that will go away as they get older and can take care of themselves. And so, yeah, the only, the only downside of it is that it's like, you know, I have no life and I'm broken all the time, <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like that will go away. I'll have yeah. no life and I'll be broken. But then once that goes away, I'll probably miss this time, you know, exactly. I'll, I'll have been so broken and have not had a life for so long that I won't get my life back and I'll be a broken person. So <laughs> uh, I'm really just the on the way down. PSA you know? about not having kids. And then they'll be, they'll be 16 and then they'll complain about how their life sucks. And then exactly. you gotta, you gotta listen to that. I have to figure out what I'm doing wrong. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, like you're not, you know what I mean? Then I have to fucking get 80. I can hope I make it to 80 and listen to my daughter do a fucking podcast called I hey. Fuck You, Dad. Hey. And then like complain. Just like, the one thing I learned from my dad is get divorced. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever you want to just get out of there. Well, um, Kurt, you have an amazing podcast called Bananas. I'm a huge fan, by the way. Oh, thank you. It's incredible. So listen to that. I know that's your plug, but then I, I was going to ask if you wanted to plug anything yeah. else before we head out. Uh, no, I mean, I'll be uh, in Lafayette and Houston and uh, Bryant, Texas, in August 6th, 7th, and 8th. And Texas then is going gotta... wild. Everyone's going to Texas. Yeah, because I don't give a shit. <laughs> and, uh, and then I've got another show in L.A. on August 11th, running my hour. And yeah, that's it. Hell yeah, Kurt. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming for in. Coming that was on. so much fun. Thank you, guys. Hey, guys, you just listened to another episode of Fuck You, Dad. Uh, if you could follow us on our Instagram, which is F-C-K-Y-O-U-D-A-D podcast. That's the important one. Uh, we also have a Twitter account, which is F-C-K-Y-O-U-D-A-D P-O-D-C-A-1 you could follow that also uh please submit any father stories that you have that you'd like us to uh make fun of laugh at or share uh shoot that to our instagram dms and if you could please uh go ahead and rate the podcast share the podcast with uh, your friends and family that might enjoy it and keep listening thank you so much